Hey y'all, I'm Sarah. I am one half of Bodice Stiplers, which is usually a podcast about drinking our way through romance novels. However, neither desperate times, we gotta put some desperate measures in. So I thought what I could do for y'all is do Sarah's Plague Kitchen. That's where I teach you how to actually take all those ingredients that you hoarded at the beginning of the crisis and make them into food. So, what we're gonna do today, normally I would be talking about pantry ingredients that you're gonna have for the long haul, but what we need to do is get all the stuff out of the fridge that's about to go nasty. So what I've done, I went a little fucking crazy after I went to, po uh, to Costco. I made a list on the fridge of the stuff that's got to go. Um, Cause it's gonna, it's gonna get slimy and it's gonna get super fucking gross. So today we're gonna take the mushrooms and we're gonna take the green beans and we're gonna make food out of them. Um, we're gonna roast them and the reason we're gonna roast them is a roasting makes everything taste better If you only had like shitty boiled broccoli when you were a kid and you think you don't like broccoli try it roasted um, The Maillard reaction turns on the starches in vegetables into sugars and so it makes them taste nicer So especially cruciferous vegetables if you've got your um, your broccoli your cauliflower your Brussels sprouts are really good roasted um, but we're doing mushrooms and green beans partly because we can do them in the same oven and partly because um, if your stuff is going a little bit nasty, roasting will kind of like cover up a multitude of ills. Um, and these also, um, it's a good way to turn stuff into, um, you can put them on top of things. You can eat these cold. Uh, so like it's a really versatile ingredient that we're going to end up with when we're done. So I'll show you what we've done. I took a giant thing of mushrooms. Um, I already prepped them, but I'm going to show you how we do that. So, people used to say that you never uh, wash a mushroom. The uh, chefs would have this little stupid mushroom brush. You brush all the literal shit that sticks to your mushrooms. Fuck them. That's disgusting. We wash our mushrooms. Um, these are baby bellas. You can do this with white mushrooms. You can do it with any kind of mushroom you got. What you're going to want to do is take the stem out, though, because it's, it's too woody. Um, you, you don't want those. Um, and what's really nice is if you have a garbage bowl, a lot of us learned this from Rachel Ray, um, and it's like a like easy way to do all your cooking. So I'll throw your nasties in the garbage bowl. Those are on the stems and we're going to throw it away when we're done. So you take your mushroom and you don't have to like use a vegetable wash or anything. Just give it a good rinse with your fingers. It's a pretty delicate, um, vegetable. So you don't want to go crazy with it, but you do want to get that gross stuff stuck to it off of it. And then you want these to all be about the same size. So I quartered most of these, except for the real little ones, which I halved. So you see what we ended up is they're all kind of roughly the same size. Um, oh, and by the way, you want this to be preheating to 375. You, um, you would normally do the uh, green beans a little hotter, but you want them to be in the same oven because, like, you know, there's no reason not to. So do that. And you put them in a bowl. You could, like, uh, stir it all together in the pan. You're not going to be happy with that, so don't bother with it. Just put it in a fucking bowl and wash the bowl. Um, you're going to take your olive oil. It does not have to be good olive oil. Um, if you don't have olive oil, any kind of oil would probably do. You probably don't want to use just butter because it would burn. Um, the next time you go to the store, I know we're trying to go like once a week or whatever, but consider olive oil a staple if you don't already think of it as a staple because you can use it for all this kind of stuff. Um, and you give it a pretty good like several turns of this. You want a good amount of olive oil on this. And you're going to take your salt and put, again, a pretty decent amount of salt on this because they are going to suck up a lot of stuff. And some pepper. And that's about all you need, really. I also have some rosemary that grows in the yard. Um, you're saying, like, oh, I thought you said pantry ingredients. Well, I'm not going to pretend like I don't have the rosemary. You don't need it, though. You could just do the salt and pepper. We're going to stir up. Make sure all the... Um, oil gets to all of those mushrooms because you don't want any of them getting all dry and little toe looking guys. And then we're going to put them here on our pan and we're going to try to kind of do a, um, a, a single layer of these guys. They are going to shrink a bit. So it can be a little more than a single layer. If you have more mushrooms than really fits in a pan, do two pans. Don't kind of mound them up because then they won't, they won't get tasty. I mean, they'll be fine, but you know, they'll be better if they're in kind of more of a single layer. And I'm going to lay my rosemary, very fancy, very barefoot contessa on top of that. So that's our mushrooms. Um, our green beans, ooh, our green beans, I never buy this stuff. 
Um, so if you buy things that are already processed, A, they're going to go bad quicker. And you can see the ones at the bottom, they're getting a little slimy looking. Um, they're also more expensive. The more they have that you have them process it for you, the more expensive it's going to be. But I lost my fucking shit at Costco. Everybody was really serious and I, everybody was freaking out about the plague. So I bought a lot of stuff at Costco. Um, this is obviously not going to finish this up. What you can also do um, before they go bad is to freeze them. The best way to freeze stuff like this is take your pan just like that. Do it in a single layer again, make sure they're washed, trim any nasty bits off of them, and chuck it into your freezer until they freeze pretty good, and then you can put them in a bag. But if you put them in a bag, like, all together like that, they're going to stick together, and it's just going to be, like, unappetizing, and you won't be able to choose how much you want to take out of there. So I would freeze them, like, right now, because they, they're already a little bit gross, trim out those little ends. Um, but the ones that you're not going to freeze, these are all pretty good. I kind of pick through them, make sure they're anything nasty, and you can just give them a good rinse. Again, get, a, get like any actual like stuff off of them. Oh, that one can go. If I weren't good at it, I would put that bad boy back on to whatever. <laughs> All right, and for these, we're going to put these back in our, our bowl. And we're going to put some more olive oil. And this time I'm going to use some Parmesan cheese. Uh, I have some pretty decent Parmesan from, uh, from the finer cheeses I like Costco. Um, you can do this with uh, the stuff from, you know, in the bag from the grocery store too. I just wouldn't do it with the stuff that's the powder in the green box, in the green can. That would probably be kind of gross. You don't have to use the cheese. I think it'll be nice. You could just do it again with the salt and pepper. You could do it with any kind of, um, seasoning mix you have on hand that you like. Like you could make it like kind of more of a southwestern thing if you've got cumin and uh, some cayenne pepper, or you can make it more of an Italian thing if you've got oregano and stuff like that. Or again, you can just do salt and pepper. Um, if you are doing cheese like this, you're going to definitely want to use foil and maybe like uh, do some um, nonstick spray because it's going to stick to everything. And again, you know, you're going to want to use some salt and pepper. What's also nice is if you roast these really simply and uh, and just finish them off with some lemon juice at the very end. Those are also really tasty. But any of these things will, um, you know, you can throw them into a wrap. You can put them in a pasta salad. You can just eat them cold or hot. And they'll, you know, they'll be tasty. All right, and you chuck these on. Make sure you get all that good cheese. And same thing, you're going to want these to be roughly in a one bean layer. You don't want like a pile of beans, which is why I didn't do all of them. Well, I'll probably freeze some. No, Squiggle them around. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we will be stirring these at least once in their journey in the oven. All right. And then we're going to chuck all this in there. Don't look at my filthy oven. In fact, don't look at my filthy kitchen at all. And if you see anything that you think is disgusting, then I suggest you look so else. All right, so we're gonna stick it in here. We're gonna 375. We're gonna put it in for 15 minutes and then we're gonna do some more shit to it. So timer, 15, start. And I will see you after the movie, movie magic happens. Okay. So the mushrooms are looking good. They're not done. There's a trick to the mushroom. I learned this from Serious Eats, SeriousEats.com, if you really wanna learn how to cook stuff. Gonna drain all this that they've released. You don't have to get all of it. Just kind of get what you can without making a huge mess. I don't know. I'm scared of things that are hot. Um, and give it a good stir. Because you'll see they gave off a lot of liquid. We need to get rid of that liquid. Um, otherwise, they're gonna keep like uh, just stewing in that. And what they're gonna do is boil instead of um, getting all reduced and, and tasty and roasty tasted. So you can see that they've lost a lot of volume, which is exactly what we want. Um, and they're looking good. They are not done yet. We're gonna put them back in for another 30 minutes. Evidently you can use this liquid um, as like sort of a vegan um, broth enhancer, all kinds of stuff. I never have um, that much wherewithal, like to be that together. But then again, desperate times. So maybe I'll figure that out these days. I'm gonna chuck this back into the oven. Now the green beans, 
They are not done yet either, but we want to take them out. You see, they're looking a lot better. Or they're looking cookedish. Um, but we would like to see them have a little bit like a browning, some some little um, roasty looking spots on them. You could probably eat them now, and if you like them a little less roasted, this might be a good um, a good level of roast for you. Um, I'm gonna put them back in though. Um, the mushrooms are gonna go back in for uh, 30 minutes. The beans are not gonna go in for 30 minutes. Um, I'm gonna put them in actually for probably five minutes and check them. So um, a cool trick if you get uh, if you use for a timer your Echo Dot, um, you can tell it to do more than one timer. Um, you can say Amazon, set mushroom timer 30 minutes. Mushroom timer, 30 minutes, starting now. Amazon, set green bean timer, 7 minutes. Green bean timer, 7 minutes, starting now. I call this one Amazon because the one in the other room gets upset if she thinks you're cheating on her. Uh, so that way when the alarms go off, they're going to say which alarm that they're for and you won't get confused. Um, so we'll come back to this when the green beans are actually done, and then we'll come back again when the mushrooms are done. All right, this is after seven more minutes, so that's actually, I was told there'd be no math, what, 22, 23? Um, it looks a lot more roasted, you'll see. It um, got a few little wrinklies, a couple spots. You can see over here some of the, the cheese is getting kind of burned looking. That's what we want to see. I, I am actually going to put it in for a little bit longer. This is up to your personal preference, but I get a bit more roasted, so I'm going to give it another five minutes. All right, so this is after an additional five minutes. At this point, we're at like, what, 26, 27? I don't do any fucking math. Now I fucking homeschool a goddamn five-year-old, but nobody should have let me do that. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to pull these out. I'm going to call these ready. Um, I'm putting them with some leftovers for dinner and I'm going to put the rest of them away. Um, you can easily use these, uh, you know, as a side, the cold or hot, or you can add it as an ingredient to lots of different stuff. So you've turned. All right. So this is the mushrooms after they had their 15 minutes, their little drain, and then their extra 30 minutes. You see that they are much smaller. They are also much more delicious. I don't even fucking like mushrooms. I mostly make them for my husband, but these are really, really good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just remove these rosemary things. And any, see they're kind of dried out. So they're, they're dropping some rosemary twigs. Um, we don't need them anymore and they're not really like super editable. So we're taking those off and then you've got your mushrooms available for all kinds of stuff. Like you could put them on top of pasta. You could add them to like a pasta salad. You could eat them by themselves. They're perfectly good cold. You can put them on a pizza if you want to. So. Um, there's a variety of things you can do with these, and again, you've bought time on them. Alright, so this is what we ended up with. Here's our mushrooms, here's our green beans, but remember, this is just a technique, it's a versatile technique. For the mushrooms, you're going to want to drain that liquid halfway through, or before that, at the 15 minute point, if you want to get this good roasted concentrated mushroom flavor. For the green beans, remember, you could have done this with anything, you could have been frozen, it could have been broccoli. It could have been Brussels sprouts, and you could use any kind of fl like flavor profile. The idea is just that by roasting it, you can concentrate that flavor, and you can make a versatile leftover for you to eat for the rest of the week or for your family to use uh, today. I think a great reason to use like um, to do like a nice vegetable like this is when you're getting tired of the leftover you have. Don't do your good sides all the first night. Like uh, save some good sides for like the third night when people are getting a little bit tired of your pot roast. You can add in, that's what we're going to have tonight. We're going to have pot roast, green beans, and mushrooms. So, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was useful to you. If you have any questions, please ask. Um, if you're interested in the podcast, it's bodicetipplers.com. And if you like this, I'll come back and I'll do no-knead bread. I'll do pantry ingredient pasta sauce. I'll do um, stuff you can do with milk. I'll do with beans, super special. I hear they're good for your heart. So, let me know. If you like it, let me know. If not, I'm going to do them anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So enjoy your year of the plague and take this opportunity to learn how to be a better cook.